The person I'm writing about is my cousin-in-law's wife, Ivy. Ivy dated her husband around the same time I dated my husband. My husband's family is rich, I would say. They own several houses and restaurants and live off the rent. My husband is set to inherit it all. This is where the story goes down. Ivy found out that her boyfriend at the time, my cousin-in-law, has a rich uncle. She started to come over frequently to my in-law's house with her boyfriend and cook food for them and just talk about random things. She was successful in getting them to like her. I was introduced to Ivy during a visit to my in-law's house. She was nice in front of everybody, but when I went to help her cook in the kitchen, she gave me the stink eye and ignored me. I accidentally got pregnant and my husband, then boyfriend, said we should start a family and proposed. Word got out and everyone was happy for us. Ivy asked how old I was and I told her I was only 20. She made some comments on why I would get pregnant at such a young age when I should be in school. She also said she knew what I was after. When I asked what she meant, she just turned and walked away. On our baby shower, Ivy announced that she just found out she was pregnant too and her husband and her have officially signed marriage papers. Ivy said she was a young mom, 22, and would like everyone to support her on her journey. It was awkward, but people congratulated her. My friends were pissed at her for stealing the light, but at the time, I defended her, saying that everyone was gathered so it was maybe the best time for her to announce to everyone at once. My pregnancy was a hard one, so my parents-in-law insisted I move in with them. When Ivy heard that I had moved in with them, she asked if they had room for her. My parents-in-law didn't refuse her, but said she would have to pay rent. She made a fuss about what the difference between me and her was, but agreed to pay $400 a month and move out after she gave birth and her baby was a month old. Her husband is mad at her because now he has to pay rent at two places when they don't earn that much. My parents-in-law bought a lot of baby furniture and baby clothes for dear son, but when Ivy saw it, she said thanks as if they bought it for her when everything was boy-themed and she was having a girl. My parents-in-law just went silent and didn't know how to respond to her. Ivy started to take parents-in-law's car keys to drive and when confronted, she said she was family and why was I able to have access to everything but she wasn't. She also wanted me to share the credit card I got from my parents-in-law. We let her have her way most times because we wanted to keep the relationship. Everyone still really likes her because she was nice and had a great sense of humor. However, it was also getting increasingly awkward when all could see that she kept comparing me to her. Dear son was born, and while I was in the hospital recovering, Ivy asked to speak privately with me. Ivy unleashed fury on me, saying just because I have a child with parents-in-law son doesn't mean anything. I am just an outsider who wiggled my way into the family and planning on using my child as a way to steal their money. She knows the kind of person I am, and she will tell everybody. She said I will never be accepted in the family, and only time will reveal my true colors. I am just dumbfounded that she had all this in her head about me. I told my husband about this, and he has a hard time believing me because Ivy is so nice. I'm also hoping time will reveal Ivy's true colors to everyone. Is there any reason you're not telling all this to your in-laws or your husband? Let them know what's going on. They are all kind of aware of the fact that Ivy doesn't like me, but since Ivy is also part of the family, they want to avoid unnecessary drama. Ivy gets along with everyone except me. Sounds like your in-laws are genuinely fond of you, with no strings or expectations, and she is jealous of that. Also, the phrase, it takes one to know one, and sayings about how suspicious people having suspicious minds seem applicable. A little background info. I am an early 30s cis female, engaged to an early 30s cis male. We've been together for about four years. I was married once before to a violent partner and met my fiance a few years after escaping that situation and taking some years off to date around, go to therapy, and just generally put myself back together. I didn't think I'd even get married again, so I can say with confidence, my partner is awesome. We are both professionals, both own our own homes and buy our own crap, and are generally living a happy life in an amazing American city. More importantly, we are still desperately in love and have fun together every day. So what I'm saying is, I'm the happiest I've ever been, and with the exception of the part coming up about my aunt and grandma find this series of events all horribly amusing.
My cousin is a 21-year-old cis female. She has dated and broken up with a series of guys, roughly her age, as one should when they're 21. I never think much about it, and maybe should have, but didn't, pay attention when she kept talking about moving in with and marrying each and every one. I had friends like that at 21, and probably also tried to envision this scenario with everyone I dated at 21, because it's a part of getting older and planning your life. However, when my cousin met Dummy, obviously not his real name, except in our home, where it very much is the only name we call him. I thought I didn't like him because I selfishly had other plans for my cousin. I was going to rent her a spot in my condo for way less than rent in our city to move to our city, approximately one and a half hours away, and get a better job in her nursing adjacent tech field. Right now, she lives with her parents in a rural area and works two part-time jobs for a lot less money. There are so many huge hospitals here where she could have a well-paid career, and I had an easy avenue to help her get started in a new city. I have had a lot of great female mentors in my life, and I try to be one now to young women I love as well. However, every time she'd get close to making this move, which she originally had approached me about, and always claimed to want to do it. But in retrospect, always after a breakup. So maybe she was just in vulnerable I want something better than this places each time, which is understandable. She'd start dating some new guy. Whatever, you can do what you want but I wanted her out of that tiny town with no prospects and into a career, which again, in retrospect, isn't fair of me because her life is her own and yada yada. This time was no different. Enter Dummy. Dummy and she went for it fast. They met and started dating in September. My fiance, then boyfriend, was hinting around at proposing around that time. And now suddenly, cousin and Dummy were also, according to my aunt. I thought it was just more young, stupid love. Dummy didn't even work. No way he was buying a ring. Well, Dummy already had a ring. He had been engaged to another girl the year before, having postponed at Christmas, and that broke up around July, August. Then he met my cousin a month later. Dummy is also 21, if that helps you visualize. I'm sure you can imagine what happens next. Dummy proposed at Christmas after a whirlwind romance of approximately three months. At that moment, my fiancé and I became enemy number one to dummy, as did all of my married siblings and cousins having babies, because no one else's relationship could possibly be the center of attention. Dummy quits his part-time job to work a worse part-time job, states his intentions to not work at all and sell crap on eBay once he's on cousin's health insurance. He has diabetes and is currently on his parents, but they make him work, at least a part-time job in exchange. Dummy has problems with being lazy. His illness doesn't debilitate him as is often the case with people. He is not on any kind of disability, nor does he need those resources to my knowledge. My fiance proposed on March 1st, after I had just been a weekend singing in the orchestra pit of the biggest theater in our city, which was already a thrilling weekend. I literally walked out of the stage door after the last matinee and hopped in the car to go. What I was told was, a late anniversary dinner. Since we had been so busy all winter and hadn't celebrated our three year, he also worked with my best friend to get about 20 of our friends there and made the proposal an immediate engagement party. It was magical. Anyway, Dummy and Cousin immediately canceled plans to come to a big family dinner that month for Easter. Moot point, since quarantine happened like two weeks later. My aunt, her mom, wanted a photo of my ring since I didn't post it on social media. I texted her one. I assume she sent it to my cousin because I literally got deleted on every social media platform that night by my cousin. Weird, but whatever. My aunt is then enlisted to ask questions about our wedding planning. I like talking to my aunt about it, but soon realize that it's causing problems. My aunt and uncle took a mortgage out on their paid off house to pay for dummy and cousin's wedding scheduled for this fall, which is getting crazier and crazier as it goes. I stopped talking to my aunt in specifics about mine and just turned the conversation back to cousin each time it comes up. I'm worried my wedding planning is influencing their wedding planning, trying to have the best wedding. Our wedding is almost a full year after theirs. Cousin has already lost her crap once because I'm using one of her colors as part of my color scheme. Also, I told her if that mattered, I technically used the color first in my wedding like seven years ago and laugh at my joke because the concept of someone owning a color is absurd. I get an angry Facebook message from Dummy. 
telling me I deserve to have been A by my ex. Apparently, cousin told him, and it wouldn't have happened if I had been a better wife and loved him harder. Dummy sends similar angry messages to other family members. My brother and I laugh a lot because Dummy tells him that no one can understand the kind of love Dummy and cousin have, and that brother clearly hasn't experienced that kind of deep love before. Brother has been married for nine years and has two amazing children. Other cousin and wife have their first child. Dummy and cousin call the baby ugly and talk about how their kids won't be ugly. Dummy and company start talking about getting pregnant before the wedding. Cousin's brother buys a house, and Dummy decides he will live there rent-free and be the roommate. Cousin decided to move in too. Her brother is rightfully against that and tells them his house is not their love nest and there are rules. They don't like that. Now both of them are living with my aunt and uncle. Dummy and cousin adopt a puppy. My aunt takes care of the puppy. Dummy kicked cousin's three-year-old niece out of the flower girl role in their upcoming wedding and calls that three-year-old girl a bee. Cousin tries to get a home loan and buy a house and can't get approved because she's 21, has no credit, and works two part-time jobs. She screams and rages at my aunt for days, and my aunt ends up back in the hospital having suffered a heart attack a couple of months prior. Aunt ends up needing some more work done to her heart. I'm sure completely unrelated to the stress of dummy and cousin. Cousin's dad gets furloughed at work for a few weeks due to quarantine. Dummy and Cousin tell him and my aunt they aren't losing a cent of their wedding budget. Cousin goes to my grandma and asks her to sign paperwork so grandma's house can be signed over to her and offers to pay $30,000 for it in monthly installments. My grandma has no concept of modern money. Grandpa did everything and died a few years ago. We've always stepped in when she needed a new car, home repairs done, etc. So she doesn't get swindled. She thinks $30,000 is low but probably not that low, as she thinks the housing market still exists circa 1975. Cousin is the youngest and the only one that hasn't bought a house, so she thinks it'll probably be okay and that money can get split between her two daughters and brother plus me. Our mom died when we were teenagers, so we split her third two ways in the estate. Doesn't even matter because grandpa had Alzheimer's and was in a nursing home for a couple of years, so the state will get most of it anyway. We just want grandma to have a happy life. Other aunt begs her not to sign anything yet and gets the house appraised. Grandma's house is worth $120,000. Dummy and cousin are angry because they wanted to buy the house and sell it out from under grandma and keep that profit. But someone found them out. We decide we won't accept a penny under $120,000 from dummy and cousin. And grandma is mad at them. She also begins calling real name dummy. There is so much more, especially with the wedding stuff. The dress and rings are their own sagas, when it comes to this entitled couple. Right now, we are kind of hoping their wedding can't happen due to pandemic, and my aunt gets a refund. Miracles happen. I like the way your grandma, despite her cognitive failings, managed to latch onto calling him dummy. I do have a possible solution. Tell them you changed your mind about the house, give them a lot of paperwork to sign, but slip in a consent form for each of them to get a lobotomy. They'll stop, well, everything, and everyone can live a relatively normal life. You should start talking to your aunt again, but feed her fake information. So, when talking about your wedding, tell her things that are the exact opposite, or things that would clash and be ugly. For example, your wedding colors are purple and blue. You're wearing this type of dress. That way, their wedding will be nothing like yours, and they'll get pissed off when they realize. I also would be careful in who you tell about any wedding details, such as other relatives, as they may tell your cousin and dummy. Update. Cousin got hired full-time at the place she was working part-time and bought a house. Good for her, very proud, etc. It was an inexpensive fixer-upper down the road from her parents, but considering she's only 22, it's still cool. Dummy isn't on the mortgage, and I suggested to her she never put him on. But she seems pretty confident this love will last forever. Uncle is increasingly more pissed at Dummy because Uncle is always overworking on the house for them. And Dummy is helping, but he doesn't do the jobs correctly, so Uncle is doing twice the work. Dummy and Cousin keep their puppy caged all day and just got a second one for some reason. Dummy quit his job to work on the house. Cousin's wedding shower happened and it was discovered through one of the games that they don't know that much about one another. 
Aunt told me at the shower that Dummy told cousin he wants her to be pregnant at the wedding and have a baby right away. Apparently, he thinks that's the most romantic thing ever. Now, she's stuck with him forever. Dummy and cousin sent out wedding invitations and are still planning to proceed with their indoor fall wedding with 200 plus guests, despite an international pandemic. Aunt told me that anyone who declines to come will just really prove they don't love cousin. My fiancé and I are going to stand or sit in the back of the ceremony and opt out of the reception. My grandma is coming with us because that is also what she wants to do. I think that's it for now. I'll update again as we march closer and closer to cousin sealing her fate of forever paying a deadbeat alimony.